Welcome to A Course in Business Miracles. This is Heather Dominic, creator of businessmiracles.com and founder and leader of the highly sensitive entrepreneur movement. Join me today for some genuine practical assistance and a business altering and life changing experience. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles, episode number 46 dealing with energy vampires as a highly sensitive entrepreneur, part two of two. In this episode, the final episode of this two-part series, I will discuss how to manage an overflow of energy as a highly sensitive entrepreneur. Step number two, which is be autonomous. And this is about boundaries. And this is a major area of practice for HSEs. So autonomous is like being an individual, right? To really be able to, first being authentic is knowing who you are, and then being autonomous is being that person, being willing to be different, being willing to be separate, and being strong in that. So this is about boundaries, So we talk about this even in the foundational principles, setting boundaries, setting boundaries first with yourself, right? That that goes into time on, time in, and time off. And then setting boundaries with others, sticking to processes like the P2P process, giving a gracious interruption when needed, not overgiving and overcaring, or caretaking when it doesn't feel good to you. And also, especially for HSEs, is setting boundaries with technology, right? How much you're going to be, you know, on the computer, on any kind of device, you know, back to number one, first and foremost, knowing yourself. What do you need? What is your rhythm And being autonomous, being willing to own that, to claim that. This is my schedule. This is how I work. So if you're scheduling P2Ps at a time that doesn't work for you, where is that coming from? It's coming out of fear, right? Fear that you won't have the client. Fear that the client won't say yes. Fear that the client will go away. Then we go back to the diagram from this morning, right? And it's fear, and it's insecurity, and it's doubt, and then it's low self-value, and then it's pushing, and then it's anger, and eruption, or it's hiding, and then it's depression. Yuck. No one is doing that to you. Number three, be nurturing. So two categories of being nurturing. Ongoing maintenance and in the moment. So ongoing maintenance of being nurturing to yourself, that's energy management, right? So that's something that you put in place every day to serve you and support you in staying grounded. And then also ongoing maintenance is any other type of of grounding activities that really serve and support you. Things that I've heard just naturally from this community is that a lot of you really enjoy taking walks out in nature. That really works for you. Yoga seems to be popular in this community that helps you get grounded. Baths. I'm a big fan of bath therapy. I'm like in the bath just about every night. That, you know, just really helps me like shed the day. So whatever that is for you, that's ongoing maintenance. So energy management, what that looks like, and grounding activities. Meditation is another activity. The key phrase is ongoing maintenance. Back to the key word of consistency. Is that whether you think you need it or not in a day, you just do it. You just do it. You do it like you brush your teeth. Do it. Because the same way that you need to brush your teeth to have good, you know, teeth and gum and then therefore heart health, you manage your energy because that is what's going to give you 
real full strength in terms of your HSE abilities and especially with your intuitive empathy. So you just do it, right? It's so interesting to me how, again, like H- HSEs will resist this. It's like, well, I don't want to be different. But you are. But I want to be like the other 80%. But you aren't. Right? So do you want to be miserable? And do you want to be caught in pushing or hiding? Or do you want to feel grounded and centered and empowered? Then you manage your energy. It would sort of be like, you know, I don't know. I always like to go back to the Olympic athletes, right? It would be like an Olympic athlete, like whining. I don't want to go to the ice skating rink and practice. Why do I have to? Why can't I just go to the Olympics? If you want to be a champion, then you do it every day. And that is who we are as highly sensitives. And then in moments. So this is the real kicker. Right? So as you are like training yourself through that ongoing maintenance, then you're still going to have moments when your energy, it, it takes you off guard and you find yourself with your energy literally being sucked. Shielding. So you may have heard this before. So zipping is like a, is, I just see it as like the shortcut. You can just take a moment and literally like visualize a shield and, and, I personally like to use gold and white, and it's coming up starting like literally above your crown, right, at that seventh chakra, and it's like, you know, like something from Star Trek, and it's just like this shield that just literally comes down around you. You're just picturing it, and you're just placing that shield of protection, seeing that white golden light, seeing that white shield just literally coming around you. You can do that in a meeting. You can do that in the grocery store. I use it on the subway all the time, right? And so literally, I've experienced this more times than I count. I'll get onto the subway and I just shield myself and you watch some crazy person like walk onto the subway and they start heading towards me and then they go in the opposite direction. Cord cutting So sometimes if you're really feeling yourself entwined with someone, it could be like when you're in a conversation with them. It could be just going to a family dinner. It could be you find yourself getting annoyed by somebody else in traffic. It could be you're trying to fall asleep and you're replaying a conversation that you had earlier in the day, last week, last month, last year, when you were five, right? And then very similarly, I personally, again, appreciate the gold white color doesn't need to be but what's happening is there's an energetic cord that's extending between you and the other person and you are allowing it so you can literally just cut that cord so I just envision like these large golden shears and I just watch that cord being cut And every time I do, I can feel the disconnect. Literally just very similar to how Maria, she said, shuts down the energy, right? So, and I can feel the disconnection. So you can cut the cord at any time. I do not need to be engaged with that. That's another in the moment. And then there's also the gracious interruption, right? So if you're having a conversation with someone, and you can feel your energy being drained. This has, yeah, you absolutely need one and two to be able to do this, though. You've got to know yourself and you've got to be willing to be autonomous. So if you're in a conversation with someone and you feel your energy being drained, even if it's at a networking event or something like that, and you say, you know what? I'm so sorry. And I'll often put, reach out my hand and I'll actually touch them, touch them very lightly. And I'll say, you know what? I'm so sorry. But, you know, I'm not going to be able to continue this conversation right now. Thank you so much for sharing what it is that you shared. And I'll see you later on during the event. And literally stop the conversation. You can also do that. I definitely acknowledge it's more difficult. You can do that with loved ones. You're in the middle of a very difficult conversation on the phone, again, at a family dinner or a meeting, you know, with your spouse. And, and, you know, we often feel, again, but this person needs something. Just because somebody needs something doesn't mean that you have to give it. 
And just because you can give it doesn't mean that you have to. So if it's on a P2P conversation and you're just like, wow, this is like so out of, this is just off. Now, of course, we're not talking about your resistance to resistance, right? We're talking about like you can really, you know yourself, you're very clear. You can just really feel this person was not an ideal client. And you just say, you know what? I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to interrupt you right here. Thank you so much for everything that you've shared. Appreciation sandwich. And I can just really tell by what you've shared so far that I'm really not the match for you. I was e-coaching about this on Facebook forum. I can really tell I'm not the match for you. I thank you so much for everything that you've shared. I can send you some resources if that's something that you'd be interested in. Um, But I think I'm going to save us both a lot of time right now and just bring this call to a close. So again, to be nurturing, you have ongoing maintenance, which will really help you within the moment, right? If you don't do the ongoing maintenance, in the moment, you're going to forget things like zipping or cord cutting or shielding or a gracious interruption. And you're just going to be all caught up and overwhelmed and go into your shadow and push through or hide. But when you're really doing that ongoing maintenance, then it will occur to you. You will be reminded. And if you feel yourself really having a moment, right, or just setting the shield, cutting the cord, I'm so sorry, I'm I'm just, I'm going to have to continue this conversation at another time. I'm so sorry this isn't for me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So appreciate that. So appreciate you. And I need to leave. Right? It's not happening to you. Okay? So from there, to be committed. This really is about establishing this new way of being. And how do we do that? Well, here we do it through community and core practice and consistency. So that in itself is the act of being committed. What's so great is because you're part of this community, you don't need to do this alone. So you can reach out and you can share on the forum. You can talk about a moment when you experienced, you know, the power of the shield or cord cutting or zipping. Or if you're having difficulty, reaching out. But what's most important is that the community holds you accountable to developing this as a core practice. Again, why would an Olympic ice skater think that they could go to the Olympics without practicing, right? Why would you think that you could be in this world that's designed for the other 80% without practicing, really owning your strengths and abilities. We have to. It's a must. And then to be trust. So this is about really trusting your HSE strengths. And I think we've had some great examples today, right? But to go back and to look at this list, right? To post this list somewhere, to be clear about this list, to be in touch with this list, to be in touch with your abilities, to be in touch with your strengths, to honor them, to own them. And then number six, to be expectant, which is about what are you expecting? What are you expecting? You're always expecting something, whether you're conscious of it or not. You always are, right? We can take traffic as an example. You know, if you're going somewhere, We can take coming here, right? Again, coming here was a big deal. You could have expected to be difficult. You could expect to get caught in a snowstorm or you could expect it to be effortless. Who is the other 80%, right? They're giving all of their attention and energy to how terrible it's going to be and how much snow it's going to be and how long it's going to take to get places and how difficult it's going to be. And I just like go on with my day, like just, all right, it's snowing, it's raining, it's whatever. Just let's go. We live on planet Earth. Who is surprised by that? (laughs) You know, it's like, come on, right? So this is not about weather. (laughs) <laughs> be expectant. What are you expecting? What are you expecting? Well, here, this is where we practice expecting miracles. To expect miracles. And it is a practice. Now, what is the 
avenue? What is the direct way to miracles? That is your HSE strengths, right? So that's what I would add to what Wendy said so eloquently earlier. You start feeling your shadow. That'll direct you. It'll give you a signal to tap into your strengths through to connecting in with source. And then through that, then you have the opportunity to experience a miracle, right? Which we remember is just a shift in perception, a willingness to see things differently. But what do you think most highly sensitives are expecting? Disaster, difficulty. That's why we go into overprotection. We expect our shadow. We expect things to be overwhelming. We expect things to be difficult. We expect to not feel like we fit in. But if you're expecting a miracle, if we just take that broad, but maybe you're not, you don't get here, but the plane that you were supposed to travel on here crashes, God forbid, you know, and you're safe at home, right? There's all different ways that it can play out. And half the time, if not most of the time, it will play out differently than the way that we, you know, want it to or can see it, Mm -hmm. right? And so the expectancy isn't so much about the specificity, more about the energy or the approach. And then to be love. So... What's ironic is, again, that as highly sensitives, like love is so accessible for us. We are so spiritual by nature. And it's so fascinating to me how we will limit that and we will box it to where and when and for who that is available, right? So I, you know, I am spiritual between me and myself and my source you know, or maybe I'll share that with some close friends, you know, but, oh, those energy vampires or that other 80% or, you know, anybody at the grocery store, like, oh, no, I got to protect myself from them. Well, you'll actually find that you'll be more easily in a state that's natural to you, that loving spiritual state, when you've got one through six really on your side. Number seven, which I'm calling... The HSE, Laws of Love. And the Laws of Love start first with value. Being willing to value yourself. Being willing to value yourself as a highly sensitive and being willing to value all of your HSE strengths. That yes, you're different from the other 80%, No, you'll never approach things the way that they do. And that doesn't matter. That there's full value and full strength in your approach. And that you can absolutely be well and be successful. And then the next is belief. Really believing in that value. Not just lip service. Not still trying to people please. Not finding yourself giving away when you don't want to, but full belief in that being authentic and being autonomous. Trust. Really trusting in that belief and in those values that they're there to really provide for you, to take care of you. It's not just like a fancy hat that you wear to a party, something that can easily be discarded. But like, this is how you live. This is how you breathe. So of course, this is how you build your business, to trust in that. And then from the value, belief, and trust, and that can lead us into faith, to having faith in that greater source, that greater force, that bigger universe, God, spirit, that you are taken care of, that you are provided for, that as you, you know, literally relax, surrender, Give in to your HSE strengths that the necklaces will easily come apart, that you'll be gifted with soup and potato chips and free drinks, that you'll have easy travel. I mean, what are the chances every eminence member arrives and the next day it snows? We've got just about every elite person here safely and the next day it snows. 
What are the chances? 110%. With the full faith, full belief, full trust, full belief, full value. And then from there to trust again. Trusting not just in self, but trusting in that greater source, that greater force to provide for you. Not just when you're working with your clients, not just when you're giving angel readings, not just when you're coaching, not just when you're healing, all the time. All the time. And then from there, being able to open up into that space, into that energy of love to operate not just parts of your life, but to operate your business from that place, to really trust that you won't be taken advantage of, but you can be strong and loving. You can be loving and set boundaries. And as you follow these laws, these HSE laws of love, that you are in a space to expect miracles. That's how we roll here. That's how things work for me. It's not just how they work for Heather. It's how they work for me. Because I'm an HSE, because I'm tuned in this way, because I'm coded this way, yes, things have happened to me. But you know what? I set the rules. I choose how I'm going to be. And I'm not a victim. Not a victim. Deep breath in and let it out. Beautiful. Thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Course in Business Miracles. If you're ready to learn how to use your highly sensitive abilities to support you in being purposeful, profitable, and empowered rather than scattered, poor, and undervalued, take my free self quiz to find out if you are indeed a highly sensitive entrepreneur. And if you are, along with your quiz results, you'll receive my free HSE success guide, which will teach you how to have your highly sensitive abilities working for you to create the results you desire in your business. Take the quiz and receive your free success guide now at www.hsequiz.com.